Alrighty. Hello, everyone. We're Group 3, Team Cerberus. So let me just introduce ourselves real quick. I'm Anish Kunin. I'm the Project Lead and Network Engineer. This is Maxwell Bland. Um, he's a Network Engineer and Gameplay Engineer. That's Connor Smith. He's a Gameplay Engineer and Co-Lead. Kristen Aguilli. She's the 3D Modeler and Sound Designer. Yiming Kai. He was the Engine, Animation, and Sound Developer. And Nick Crow at the end there, who was Engine and UI Developer. Also, special shout-outs to Kristen's sister, Caitlin Aguilli, for some of the co 2D concept art, and Oliver Huang for assistance with 3D modeling. But, so our game is called Leave Me Alone, and we have squirrel hand puppets, as you probably saw in the intro video. Um, it's a competitive leaf-blowing action game um, where you play as a squirrel um, armed with a leaf blower and a flamethrower as well, and you're trying to hoard as many leaves as you can. So, can we get two volunteers? I'll get Dale. <laughs> and can I get the... Richard, in the back? Awesome, awesome. So when we were kind of starting to think about kind of the idea of the game, we actually came up with the idea of hoarding leaves relatively quickly, but we were kind of thinking of ways to get players to interact with each other more, because just blowing people around aren't interesting. Feel free to come in, come in. So one person just suggested, how else, like we're thinking, like, how else do you deal with leaves? And I was like, what if you have a flamethrower? <laughs> so you can burn leaves and you can burn players. It's multi-purpose, it's great. Alrighty, we'll get connected shortly. Yeah, other things, um, we were thinking about like what kind of animal to use for it, because we were, we were thinking like woodland animals, because humans would be kind of, it'd be kind of weird lighting people on fire. So, uh, but we saw this really cool t-shirt of a squirrel with a flamethrower. <laughs> and then that's where, okay, we're doing squirrels. Even though we're not like collecting nuts or anything, but leaves, makes sense. Another thing, um, People kind of get confused sometimes um, about collecting leaves versus pushing leaves to the other side. We wanted to have it so you hoard leaves, even though it kind of makes sense to keep your yard clean, because if you're, if you're just pushing leaves away, you don't have to really get in with the other player. But if you're trying to get leaves on your side, then it really motivates players to get close and just push each other around. All right. Let's get started shortly. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So right now we're in like a kind of pre-round state. We're just walking around while waiting for players to connect. So uh, we have three major functions you can use. There's the leaf blower, which is the primary tool, where it, which pushes leaves the fastest. So Connor's on the red team, as you can tell by the red health bar. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so every, all the four players connected, so now we're starting a round. Alrighty, so uh, you can see by the green colored leaves, the ones that are tinted, that those are ones within range. So we're starting to collect leaves onto, I said, Dale, don't light him on fire. <laughs> You can burn your own leaves as well. Don't do that. Would not recommend. <laughs> okay. So right now, red team is in the lead with 50 leaves. Uh, oh, okay. In the middle fight, there's a lot of stuff going on. Nick versus Connor. <laughs> Dale. Dale murdered Connor. You can put out your teammates using the leaf blower, and you can put out leaves as well. So. <laughs> Alrighty. Nick's taking very aggressive. Oh no, Dale. Nick's taking a very aggressive approach. Dale, put that down. That's a player. <laughs> okay, so when players aren't on fire, they'll regenerate health. So, so being set on fire isn't death sense. So you kind of have to keep at it. And teamwork is really important because if you can put out your allies, then you'll you'll live a longer life, which is good. <laughs> if your teammates aren't there to help out, though, <laughs> rip. So you can see. Wow, Connor just got 200 leaves, which is an instant win. Otherwise, uh, whoever has the most leaves by the end of five minutes wins. So you can see all sorts of interesting stats. Connor claimed most of the leaves for the team. But here goes, next round. Alrighty. So they're using the suction tool right now. It has shorter range and is not as fast because we wanted to keep it as kind of a more optional tool. We didn't want it to be as powerful as Leaf Lord because it's a lot safer to use that. All right, here are those. There's kind of a fight in the middle of the area. They're lighting a lot of their own leaves on fire, but... Wow, Connor takes on two people. <laughs> Dale, make sure you know which one's equipped. You can see which tool you have equipped in the bottom left corner. Yeah. So right now, Connor's a flamethrower. Connor is doomed. Take as many leaves with him as you can. <laughs> Dale's on the enemy side right now, uh, but there's not much there to burn, so... 
Nick takes down like 30 leaves, so not bad. All right, they do a good job of protecting their sides. Blue team takes lead though, with because he, they destroyed those leaves. <laughs> William is body blocking in the middle. Flames. Nick is very aggressive. Oh, uh, kind of tried to save Dale, but it was just not enough. If you focus your fire on on a single object, it'll take more damage. The flames get more strong, get stronger around the actual object. Oh, kind of goes in. Destroying their leaves. They aren't, they aren't stopping him. Oh, it takes out Nick too. <laughs> William seemed distracted by Connor. <laughs> oh, Connor's body blocking Nick. It's a bit of chaos in the middle. Oh. So you can put out your leaves while the enemy's still alive, but they can keep trying to burn them. Oh, they took down a lot of leaves. But red team is still in the lead with 72 versus 10. About three minutes remaining in the match. <laughs> Nick is running around. Oh, but he dies to the afterburn damage. Dale, put out Connor! Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see. Blue team is still in the lead right now. All those leaves are on fire in red face, even though they're just cold. So suction doesn't put out fire as well, it's not as powerful. Combined suction though is pretty good. Alright, red team is very close to winning at 165 leaves. Fire though? <laughs> Ooh. Both teams are pretty much at almost no leaves now. So there's kind of a natural push and flow where if another team is close to winning, it might be a good strategy to go over there and destroy as many as you can. If you have fewer leaves, then there isn't as much risk of leaving your base, but if you have a lot of leaves, you might need to spend more time protecting them. Connor's about to die with after bird damage. You can see where your teammates are if they're off screen. There's a little indicator showing. Oh no! Blue team is very ahead though, 167 leaves, with 1 minute 30 seconds remaining. Connor's just playing the very uh, defensive game, grabbing as many leaves as he can. Wow! Almost all the blue team's leaves, but Nick is being really aggressive too. 72 leaves, down from like 160. <laughs> wow, six leaves, six versus zero leaves. <laughs> we were so close, they were, red team was so close to victory and now two leaves, one. <laughs> red team is still in the lead. <laughs> one leaf, 2v2, all right, there we go, there we go. When a leaf is destroyed, it'll respawn in the center area. Um, there's only 300 leaves, so if you want to win by elimination, you need 200 leaves. If the other team has more than 100 leaves, you have to go to the enemy side and either burn them or steal them for yourself. Okay, so red team is in the lead now with 115 leaves with about 20 seconds remaining. Looks like Connor's trying to protect the base from Nick by pushing him back and, and burning him when possible. Oh, look at that. Not a single leaf in the base caught on fire. <laughs> Dale! <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... Four, three, two, one. Oh, oh, with 41. Oh! <laughs> Connor claimed 400 leaves, extinguished 200 leaves, destroyed 460 leaves. Not bad, not bad. You can also hit tab at any time to... Oh yeah, switch off. You can also hit tab at any time to see the stats. So, I guess nothing happened yet. <laughs> What? <laughs> Betrayal! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're switching off? Okay. Blue team is has a lead, but I think the Connor has been kind of let it go for a sec. Alright, now, now we're actually going to play. So, in terms of other things we had in the game, particle systems were huge for our game just because 
that's like most of the interaction. So we, we spent a lot of time on the flame particles, the leaf blower particles, the suction particles. I think it looks really cool. That was mainly Yiming who worked on that. Put out Dale, put out Dale! Uh, red team's in the, head, in the lead right now. Leaf physics are also really interesting because we didn't use a separate physics library or anything. We had Connor actually spent a lot of time developing all the physics interactions um, by comparing all the colliders by hand. Okay, red team takes the lead. The teamwork though, pushing and pulling, very good. Nick again is being very aggressive. I think I think Connor put out Nick. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna call the players by their names even though they actually swapped out, but Connor and Dale, all right. Blue team takes the lead with 100 leaves. Now might be a good time to be more aggressive and try to destroy their leaves. Oh no, but they're about to die. All right, all right, here we go. Aggressive strats? Ah, oh, they're too defensive. Oh, Dale goes though, Dale goes. Looks like Dale's done a good job destroying their leaves. <laughs> Nick, do you are you always gonna play aggressively? <laughs> oh, that's not Nick. Different player. Twenty leaves to twenty leaves. Uh, a little bit of lag there. <laughs> Another thing, like Nick saw that they were gonna use those leaves at the bottom and bring them into their own base, so he tried to destroy them as soon as he could. Leaves don't regenerate health, so if they're already heavily damaged, then then it's not going to be good. Oh, blue team got 200 leaves. Instant victory. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Questions? Yeah. Particle effects? So, um, you mean worked on the particle effect system, so he'll need to talk about that one. Uh, I don't know if you want to come up. <laughs> uh. Alright, so the particle effects are basically, um, it's everything is inside an array of um, triangles. Each particle is basically a square and it's textured using some external textures. Um, and then each particle is assigned to four points, which is basically the square, and we have some black magic physics to do the job of calculating like when to push, when to calculate the, the position of the particle, and it's updated per frame. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. The physics is, I don't really get it myself in the end, okay. so. Um, they are not really physics objects. Um, yeah, they're animations. They are more like you. You mean the particle system? Um, no, the tails. The okay. tails are all pre-animated. It's part of the model. It's part of the model. Yeah. Um, so Christine is the one who made the models. Um, and all the animations. And all the animations. We simply loaded animations, so we can change that in time. Yes. <laughs> this, like, oh, so, so the question was, um, is networking difficult in a game with lots of little small physics objects that all need to be moving? And yes, yes, it spent, we spent multiple weeks solving similar problems over and over just because different permutations, different things we added would cause additional problems. Um, like, I think initially we did the whole, um, the old architecture asynchronous. Then we decided to make it synchronous because we were having some strange issues with like uh, threading and stuff. And then that wasn't, we, it was working for a bit, but it wasn't fast enough. So we made it asynchronous again. And just as kind of the needs of the project changed, we decided how things would work better over time. And for every leaf there, you have to kind of keep track of, so, so one of the most interesting things about this game is there's so many things that are being destroyed and created at the same time that 
And every client needs to know which object is which to be able to render it, to be able to know like, oh, this leaf has five health uh, and it's burning right now. So we have this massive like hash map of like associating objects with IDs and we're sending those down. And so the ordering of things is really important too, because if we try to reference a object that hasn't been created yet, it'll explode. So it, it, was, it was a lot of work is the, is the point. Yeah, um, so I think players aren't really destroyed. They just turn invisible and then they, we turn off physics for them. Uh, but for leaves, I think we're destroying those right now and just respawning them. We were considering like pooling objects so we, would, we wouldn't need to reinstantiate or anything. But just for convenience sake, we decided not to do that. Because if we do something like that, um, we need to keep track of our object IDs properly. But with um, creating a new object, we just destroy the old one and just make a new one. So it wasn't, it just made sense for our design. A lot of questions. Okay, over there. The sounds. Uh, I think those are all found on the internet, and then we just modified them with Audacity. It'd be cool if we had like an actual leaf blower or flamethrower, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So Connor worked a lot of. Oh, I guess the question was, how do we set up the level like a maze? So Connor first made like a tree with a collider. And we were talking about making like walls around the area so they couldn't walk out because initially you just walk around everywhere and it was, it was a problem. So he just wrote code that would um, you kind of specify the range, and, the width and height of the area, and it would just spawn trees in like a line. And we liked it so much that we kind of decided to use that for the kind of rest of the design. Um, initially the map was super open, you just walk anywhere, but we wanted to kind of funnel players together so that we, they'd be forced into conflicts and things. We also have like a little, oh nice. Red team one. Or, so uh, we also have like a little U-shaped thing in the middle of each player's area. We we're kind of thinking that could be used to kind of protect your leaves, so the enemy has to go really far in to attack your leaves to get defended better. So it was kind of we just had functions to place these trees. Is the kind of idea. Okay. Uh, so the question was in like. A multiplayer game how do we network like what leaves are being created so really what's going on behind the scenes is the server is the only thing that knows these are players these are leaves these are burning these are the velocities all that's going on in the client is it's receiving those and it's drawing them but it doesn't know how they work or anything um, so all the creations done server side and just sent to the clients even the player the player is basically just a dumb like terminal that sends hey I want to go up and the server is like Okay, you can go up, or you can't go up, or something like that. Any other questions? <laughs> Number on top right? Number on the top right was FPS.